This is my DJI Neo. And I've got to say, just as a standalone unit, I didn't purchase this with the combo pack. It's actually been a really fun drone. Now, at 135 grams, it's not going to be the best thing that's on the market in terms of drones, but obviously for what it offers, it does do very well. Now, one of the main reasons I didn't purchase the combo pack is I didn't need the additional controller as I already have a DJI Mini 4 Pro and the controller that comes with the Mini 4 Pro is fully compatible with the DJI Neo. Now, in order to get this to work, you will need to download the latest Fly App update on the controller. And once you've gone ahead and done that and updated the firmware on the drone, then you will be able to select the Neo as a drone to connect to from within the app on the controller. And from there, it's just a case of following the instructions, holding the power button down for four seconds on the drone in order to put it into pairing mode. And then you are able to connect. The whole process did just take a couple of minutes on top of downloading the firmware update. But I am a little bit nervous, I'll be honest. 135 grams doesn't feel like it's going to be all that robust, you know, high up in the sky. It's fine as a selfie camera when it's just whizzing around you or whatever. But taking this up at height is making me a little bit nervous. We'll see if we lose it. Hopefully we won't. And it will actually manage the air currents that we currently have today. So let's go ahead and get things set up. And once this has actually turned on, before I do anything, this will be my first flight with the controller. I'm going to just go ahead, run through the settings, make sure that things are set up. So importantly, of course, return to home is at the correct altitude and we'll need to make sure we have a good satellite connection as well. So yeah, while we wait for those satellites, let's get the auto return to home. I'm going to set that to 45 meters. That's actually really high. For a 135 gram drone, I might drop that down a little bit. Let's put it to four. Let's put it to 35 meters because the direction I'm going to be flying in, there shouldn't be any obstacles in the way. And yeah, it's currently set in 4K30, which is the highest recording mode that the DJI Neo is capable of capturing. You can get 60 FPS with this, but you will need to drop that resolution down to 1080p. What's great is I don't need any SD cards. I don't need one in this controller because it has internal storage and the Neo itself has 22 gigabytes of internal storage as well. In fact, you cannot put an SD card in the Neo. So it's not going to be serving as a replacement for my Mini 4 Pro, that's for sure. But I do want to see what it's capable of. So let's go ahead now and get it into the air, shall we? Uh, let's gain some altitude. Wow. That is... I did not expect that. It has kept its position perfectly. Let me show you that. Yeah, look at that, guys. In the sky there, it's not moving at all. It is holding a perfectly stable position. Okay, it's not very high yet, but that's a good start, so I'm happy with that. Gives me a little bit more confidence going forward here. <laughs> so let's hit the record button as well. We'll see what the Neo is actually capable of in terms of what it's able to capture. Let's gain a little bit more altitude now. It's currently in normal mode in terms of speed. So we'll see what sort of speed we get there. Bump the heights up to about 30 meters. Yep, still very stable there in the sky. Let's start pushing it forwards. It is a little bit slower than the Mini 4 Pro, which to be honest, I fully expected. If I just pop it into sports mode there, then yeah, we're going about six and a half meters per second, which is not too bad actually remember this is a 135 gram drone and this is effectively serving now the place of one of the mini drones that dji offer that are obviously far more expensive such as the mini 4 pro of course there's a lot of features that the mini 4 pro has that this doesn't and this thing looks to go out of line of sight very quickly because it's so small but actually I didn't expect to be able to capture this much range either. 233 meters, about 600 feet for a drone that's probably got some very small antennas in it. We've still got full RC signal bars here. I'm not sure what the maximum range of this will be. I'm not going to push it. So let's just have a whiz around the fields here. See how the flight feels, which so far I've got to say, it does feel very nice. I'm not getting any warnings. I'm feeling a little bit of a breeze around my body, but nothing on the screen, you know, saying warning about the wind. I was worried I was going to be getting spammed with that again because of the small size here, but that's not the case at all. There we can see our AR home points. I'm not joking for the price of this drone, okay? The price I paid didn't include the controller, which I didn't need, obviously. 
But still, for the drone itself, I think it does offer quite a lot. So what I'm going to do now is test the return to home feature. See how that works return here. To home. Now, of course, I've only got the one battery and they're not huge, the battery. So we're already down to about 70%. Um, but again, for capturing quick shots, this thing is fantastic because you can literally carry it in your pocket. As long as you've got a fairly sized you know, pocket, you can actually carry it with you. Whereas even something like the Mini 4 Pro, which is still a mini drone, is too big to be as portable as the Neo. And yep, yeah, looks like right above the table where we took off from, I noticed that the gimbal had to drop right down for return to home. I'm not sure why that was, whether that's how the drone um, helps to detect the landing position. I know the DJI Mini 4 Pro has precision landing. I don't think the Neo does. So I'll just cancel that for the time being. We'll push this forward and land it manually, shall we? Very, very stable. Landing. That, that's a joy to fly, that is. I really did not expect at 135 grams it was going to be that stable in flight. But one other thing I just want to show you quickly, when you're flying with a controller, is that you can access some quick shots from this mode as well. So I'll pop that back into normal mode for now in terms of the speed. And on the app, if we just tap the icon above the record button, we can see the quick shots menu item. We have Drony, Rocket, Circle, uh, sorry, Circle, Helix Orbit, and also the Boomerang. So yeah, let's give the Rocket a go, shall we? You've got to be careful with these, of course, because there is no obstacle avoidance. And it looks like it's detected me as a subject, so if I just tap the Add button there, this is really clever. Yep, I didn't need to draw any squares around me, it did that automatically. Just Three. tap the Start button. One. and the quick shot is going to be recorded in this case the rocket but of course you can choose any of those other quick shots that I just showed you hi guys and it's coming back down again back to the original position now that the quick shot has completed how simple was that Oh, that was annoying. My main camera just overheated. But folks, this was my first flight with the Neo using a controller, not just simply the quick function modes that you operate with the mode button there. I've got to say, this drone just continues to impress me. I did purchase it, by the way. But what do you think of the DJI Neo? I'll catch you next time.